this video will have the Civil 3D workflow and how most best to set up your project directory along with your design base files, Civil 3D plan profile sheets, and the 2D line work base. Um, I'm going to show you this little graphic here as it might help kind of understand what goes into what and what needs to be xref versus data referenced. Um, it seems that everyone has confusion over what components make up the actual project, what needs to be in what drawing, where is it created. So I'm going to run through this today and hopefully it will help. Um, there's a couple, a couple ways to start. Typically, everything's going to start from your survey drawings. Um, survey will get the go out survey, get the topo, and then they're going to have a topo drawing that will have an, a data reference of the surface, the existing pipes, um, and obviously you have 2D line work that you're going to bring into your drawing. So in this folder, there should be data references from a survey that will have your existing pipes and an existing ground surface. From there, you would be able to start your 2D line work if you're having a, if it's a roadway job or a curb and sidewalk replacement or a full depth reconstruction or a new road. You're going to start with 2D line work that will show a picture of what's going to be in the plans. Once you create that, you can then start your design base, and you know you'll have it 15 or 16 or whatever the year is it'll be, and then the project number after that, and the name, and name, project name, and then design base. In this design base, you're going to create your proposed alignments, your proposed design profiles, create your corridors for the surface modeling. And from that corridor, you would create your proposed grade surface. Um, once those components are created, you're going to create a data reference shortcut from this design based drawing into your data reference shortcut folder. That way, once you get to the point of creating your plan profile sheet, you can bring those in. Um, if the project has storm, I like to have a separate proposed storm base, so it's kind of the same naming convention, the year, the pro project number, and then P-Storm. You're going to create your proposed storm pipe network in this drawing. Once it's completed, you would then create a data reference from there into the data reference shortcut folder, which I like to keep at the top of my directory, so number, project number. I like to have a folder, C3E data shortcuts, shortcuts, and I will have a video after this one that will go through how and how data shortcuts are made, where to create the folders, and all that, but for now we'll just, we're just talking about the workflow. So your proposed components, the design base, you're going to have alignments, profiles, corridors, your proposed grade, all of those will have data references, your proposed storm, um, sanitary components, once those are created, you will have a data reference for it. So that, once these three things are created, your 2D line work for the proposed entities that will be like roads, driveways, uh, proposed right away also can be one of those 2D components. Um, once all that's created, then you're ready to create your plan and profile sheets. And you will data reference in your proposed alignments, surfaces, pipe networks. You also data reference in your existing surface and existing pipe networks that come from the survey topo drawing. And then you will X reference, you want to X reference the existing topo drawing and the property line drawing from survey. You also would X reference in a proposed right away drawing along with your proposed 2D uh, line work. Now, I know that that is a lot to chew on. Um, I kind of want to show the typical um, 
a typical project directory just for just to look at. Um, I would ha <clears throat> I would have the name of the job and a number. The top folder I'm going to have I call it C3D, and when you create a data reference, it's going to create. I'm sorry, when you create a data shortcut folder, it's going to create these folders through here automatically and this is where all of the data reference information is held your proposed alignment has a has a file that's in XML um, along with pipe networks surfaces etc all of that is contained in here um, from there I like to have a design folder and then a drawings folder and I have all my drawings you know pretty segmented out um, it makes it easier, in my opinion, it makes it easier when these are all segmented out appropriately. It makes it easier to import things into your sheet set in a logical and easy to use format. Things are broken out. Um, I keep my design bases underneath drawings, not necessarily under folder. Some people like to do a, a design base folder ahead or behind of these. I keep them here just for easy access. I have an XREF folder that all of my XREFs are kept in, and those are the, what will be brought into um, the plan sheets, etc. Um, so, just to kind of look at this, this will be my design base. I have a corridor in here, I have a proposed profile. This is a road replacement job. I have all of my uh, corridor alignments for curve returns and whatnot in here. All of the assemblies are in here. And notice that's it. I don't have cross sections. Um, I don't have anything other than what is needed to create the corridor. I do have XREF in here, the topo drawing, and you know that that's so you can know where to start building your corridor. Um, there should also be x into, into this uh, corridor design base. Should also be x the proposed hardscape base, like the proposed um, road drives, etc. So I'm gonna I'm gonna add that in just for visual to look at. That way, your targets in the corridor can be set to the line work that you have built in your 2D base. Um, it just makes it nice to be able to, because in 20, Civil 3D 2016, you can attach your corridor um, targets to an XREF. I'm not sure what year that started. I think it might have been 2014, but it, it definitely can be done in 2016. Um, you can attach your targets into or to an XREF. Um, if it's an elevation target, you would have to create a, um, a feature line with an elevation to get that to um, go to the vertical that you would like. Um, here we go. So I'm going to add in my proposed drive just for a visual so that you can see how the surface interacts with the line work of the proposed drives. I, uh, I have my, my plan profile sheet open, I have my drives open, and my storm open just to kind of show you where things as far as X references versus data references come from. Um, it is pretty self-explanatory, but it can also be very confusing if it's your first time to kind of try to wrap your head around the concepts. So that's what we're going to try to try to explain today. I guess I will show you my. Oh, I can't show anything. I'm still waiting on this to synchronize. Um, I also have in this design based drawing, I have the existing topo um, surface as a data reference in here so that I know what I need to tie back to. Um, that way, when you go to look at your road, Proposed, you know, you have to have that so that you can create a proposed 
um, profile, you have to look at the existing to create a propose. Um, this project didn't have much of it, but it also has the existing, I have the existing storm in here in case I need to look at a crossing in profile um, so that you can check to see where your crossings are going to be. And I think the proposed road is going to be really popular. It's taking a while. But this workflow is the most efficient that we have been able to come across. Um, now you can see that I have proposed line work in here for the curb, the curb returns, and this is the project that we're doing. We're doing new curves up to the edge, or new roads up to the edge, and, and new curves along the edge of the road as well. Um, so that that is the design-based drawing. And I'll drag my tool space over here to kind of show you. Um, inside the design-based drawing, this is your data reference folder. Um, you can see here where I set it. Um, and I have showed you those folders the first of this. So in, you got the Tanny Place proposed grade that's created from this um, corridor. Uh, you have your, I have my center line alignment, which is what I'm using to define the corridor. Um, I have the proposed storm in here. There's not much proposed storm, but the little that I have created in the P storm drawing, I have data referenced into here so that you can get a good idea of how everything is together. Um, so now I want to take a quick look at the proposed profile drawing to kind of just give you an idea of what is XREF and what is data reference. It seems to be a big confusing stumbling, stumbling block for how this actually goes to put together the uh, the drawing. Um, in this drawing, your border is going to be xref obviously, because that's just a 2D drawing. I have the property lines x ref from the survey drawing. So you can see I have my proposed drives, which could be your proposed hardscape, proposed road, whatever you want to call it. Um, I've got some sidewalk ramps where we're doing sidewalk work at the intersections. Um, those are X refs because it's just 2D line work. Um, the Tanny Place topo north and south is X ref in this drawing so that you can see the trees, the edge of road, whatever features are necessary for showing in your um, plan profile sheets. So that is what's x ref proposed drives, topo north and south, if you have sidewalks so, or anything like that that needs to be brought in, and then obviously your border is x ref So I'm going to move that back. So when you're creating your plan and profiles, the alignment is going to be x ref You can see the stationing and the alignment. And then once you have that, you also are going to x ref your existing surface and your proposed surface. The proposed will come from your design base and it's all going to come from the data reference folder which is again here. You got your, got your proposed. That one's not showing the existing but for this example I'm going to just tell you the existing is also data referenced in there. This is your alignment. You're going to click on it, right click, create reference and then it'll be in the drawing. Um, pipe networks, same thing. Uh, data reference your pipe network and click on it, right click, create reference, and then it'll be in the drawing. Um, you will have to do some modifications on the styles of those to make sure they look right when you bring them in, but that is another, uh, that's another video. Um, so once you have a data reference of your existing and your proposed, then you will be able to do a profile from the station extents that you want to do. And then as you can see, you have the existing and the proposed in your profile and you got it labeled up like me and all. Um, it's just the easiest workflow so that 
if someone is so if this project is about halfway through and changes are being made someone can be working on the design base affecting the corridor and the cross sections while another person is coming through in the plan and profile sheet labeling up property owners street names different alignment labels profile labels pushing that part forward as well so multiple aspects of the project can be moved forward and then along with that if you have a big storm network someone can be in the storm drawing as well editing the proposed storm so that when they save it's going to update that data reference and then it will update in your plan profile it will update in your corridor proposed design based drawing same with if you were editing in the design based drawing and you save the corridor that proposed stuff is going to update in your plan profile so the idea is that these all work to build your plan profile drawing so that multiple things can be done at the same time and the drawing is not bottlenecked with one or I'm sorry the project is not bottlenecked with one drawing holding everything up or if one drawing corrupts everything is corrupted um, it helps isolate different aspects so that if one thing goes down it's not going to all be you know it's not going to all be messed up or kind of I'm looking at the stone now so if you decided you needed to add more to this pipe network you would add more save it and get out and then whoever's working in these in the plan and profile drawing would get a, a pop-up window saying synchronize a reference and then whatever you had added to the storm would update in the plan and profile um, I feel like it's the easiest way to build a project have have multiple people working on it and it's the most efficient so I'm going to bring back up this window that we were looking at just to kind of in review so you have your design base with proposed alignments profiles corridors proposed grade you're going to data reference those to your data shortcut folder and then those will be data reference into your plan profile sheets if you have a storm base or a sanitary base you're going to create that network and do a data reference to the shortcut folder and then data reference those into plan profile sheets obviously you're going to have a 2d line work proposed roadway sidewalks shoulders drives and also probably right away if it's part of the project that is going to be x referenced into your plan of profile sheets your survey topo drawing is going to be x referenced into your plan of profile sheets and then your survey existing surface and pipe networks are going to be data referenced into your shortcut folder and then data reference from there into the plan profile sheet so I hope this has helped um, obviously there's going to be different ways to do it but I feel like this is one of the most efficient ways and I've been successful with this model so I hope this helps